Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $5,000 Modern Open. I'm Candy, joined by Ross Merriams. Hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We're here in sunny Caldwell, Ohio for Apex Con, and we're doing two Modern 5K Opens this weekend. Today, we are four rounds in. We've got three more rounds of Swiss and Top 8 we're going to bring you today, as well as doing it all again tomorrow. We're in round number five, Ross. Why don't you give us a rundown of what we're going to be watching in this one? Well, so round five, we are entering sort of the business end of the Swiss rounds of this tournament. Uh, winners here, the 4-0 bracket, will look to double draw into the top eight. And I can say happily that none of our five 4-0 players are playing Bant Nadu. Bant Nadu Woo! was the, the most played deck in the field with 14 copies. Uh, out of 95 players, so about 15% of the field was Bant Nadu, but you know the Boros and Mardu energy decks and Jeskai control decks were right behind that in terms of numbers at 12 and 10, respectively uh, 12 when you combine the 8 Boros and 4 Mardu. So seeing a lot of those decks represented, and it is that matchup that we're going to be starting with here in round 5. Players at table 1, so these are two 4 0s Justin Atkins on Boros energy and uh, Ryan Hayes, who we saw earlier on Jeskai control. Looking to punch an early ticket here to the top eight, maybe take a couple of rounds off. Yeah, I think the story of this match is going to be whether or not uh, Ryan Hayes is able to draw Wrath of the Skies. Wrath of the Skies, brand new sweeper effect, energy reliant, is excellent against cheap creatures. And this Boros energy deck is completely full of one, two drop creatures. Uh, it's going to be a tough one for the Boros energy deck, I think. Yeah, this particular Boros list is a little bit more red-heavy as opposed to white. There's no copies of Ocelot Pride, instead of relying on Rogavan. has a lot of red removal, which is actually pretty weak in the control matchup. Um, but three made copies of Blood Moon could steal a game from Ryan. Ryan does have two Island and two Planes and two Lorien revealed, so a lot of ways to find basics in his list in addition to the fetch lands. Any Eagles? Any Eagles uh, to no, go get the Planes? No Eagles. Dang. Three copies of Fable in the Boros list. That'll be very important in this matchup. A lot of the card advantage generating threats. If we can get Amped Raptors or Johnnies and Fables, then you got a really good shot. If you're just playing a bunch of Guidosols and Rogavans, the Jeskai deck will likely mop it up pretty easily. Yeah. Well, the players are situated and ready in the feature match area, so let's head on down for round number five. On your right, that's Ryan Hayes playing Jeskai Control. His opponent on your left playing Boros, Justin Atkins. And we're underway. Sparse headquarters for Ryan. Not a Jeskai land, but an extra color you can fetch sometimes for Prismatic Ending. Yeah, only the two copies of Ending, but such a low cost to have a Triome in your deck. Turn one, Raghavan. See if Ryan has Red Source and Red Removal lined up for it. I don't know. I see yeah. a Meticulous Archive. Nope. I lied. I'm going to make Red, red, or red, blue, maybe? Going to kill the Raghavan, for sure, with the red. We'll see if we have a one-cost blue spell to play. Might just be cycling this Lorien Revealed. Great. Great use of mana as well. Make sure you hit your land drops. Perfect. Has Flage in hand, too, for next turn, so it can take care of a threat with some value, gain some life, and be well on his way uh, into the late game where he wants to be. Love it. All right, after he gets this land, we're going to go back to Atkins. Turn number two, see if he's got a Johnny or a couple of one-drops to really apply pressure. I see Guide of Souls, and I see a Raghavan, so we might see both those deployed this turn. Maybe dash Raghavan into Guide of Souls off the treasure. Are you a dasher or a caster? Caster. I'm a caster as well. I think people will be dashing way too much. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Here's a couple of creatures here. Guide of Souls. We got a caster. Justin Atkins is going to play the Raghavan and the Guide of Souls. Gain an energy and a life. Once you get three energy with the Guide of Souls, we can start putting counters on the creatures that attack and give them flying in plus one plus one counters. Yeah. Big problem there is that you need to extend a lot of creatures onto the battlefield, and that leaves you vulnerable to the sweepers. So... Atkins likely going to be getting himself up to three, stopping. Then if you get swept, you can play a creature. And uh, not going to go too hard with uh, the Guide of Souls. All right, three damage to the Raghavan. Going to gain three life as well. Going to pass back to Atkins. Okay, well, I see Aether Hub and I see... 
a fable. This seems like a great play because now the Goblin Shaman will get you up to three energy. We can attack, put some counters on the guide, start getting some pressure, and you're not really that overextended into a sweeper. Yeah, it looks great. The uh, the question last turn of do I kill Raghavan or Guide of Souls is not as easy as it sounds because of this right here. Now Ryan is facing down a pretty large flyer and doesn't necessarily have the ability to kill it right this second. Yeah, 3-4 means that it can survive a flage trigger. Ryan's got a couple solitudes, a prismatic endings, and even a discharge would deal with that because he's got the two energy left over from the previous discharge. And of course, rather the skies would be excellent here. Could just clean up the entire battlefield. I'd like to grant some kudos to Ryan Hayes, may I? Sure. Kudos to Ryan Hayes for playing some of those filter lands from uh, Shadowmoor to help out with the flashback of Flage. We're able to play Basic Island along with Mystigate yeah. and Cascade Bluffs in order to still play that big giant from the grave. Yeah, Mysticate is, is pretty common. You don't see Cascade Bluffs as much. Ryan going for one of each. Uh, I usually see two Mysticates in these lists. So, uh, you know, diversifying his mana base is Ryan, though Flage and Discharge are the only red cards in the main. So Ryan can play an untapped White Source here. And then on his opponent's turn, he can float blue, blue, red, and go counter shell bolt. But it's hard to do that. Yeah, instead, just meticulous archiving, surveils of thunderous, thundering falls to the graveyard, has a second discharge that can answer Guide of Souls. Then you still have to answer the other threats. One card discarded from the Fable, just a dead removal spell. Energy here. I see Blood Moon in Atkin's hand. That could be very annoying for Ryan. Just has the one basic on the battlefield. And no white mana. Uh, Plains is definitely the most important basic in this matchup. Yeah, but I couldn't go get a Plains anyway. We are going to make a treasure. Uh, Ryan leaving up this counter spell. Using his life total as a resource. And going to get paid off for it. Gets to counter this Blood Moon. Okay. Nice patient control play. From one of our most decorated players here on the Apex series. Now I believe we can kill both creatures with Flage and Galvanic Discharge. And we even have basic planes, and so we have access to all of our colors. Looks like that is what we're gonna do, but we're not gonna be able to leave open red mana, I don't think. Maybe he just doesn't care about it. I mean you're going up to eighteen, you can take three, you still have fifteen. It's just not a big deal. Ryan has you know, stayed toe to toe with Atkins every step of this the game, interacting a ton on every turn. In a turn, Philia. You get Philia on camera when you get a moment, but uh, this new two drop, two cost, two two flash. Uh, whenever it attacks, you can exile a creature, and then it returns to the battlefield. I believe at the end step. This is really nice for getting Flage off the battlefield. It will come back and maybe eat something, but it will go to the graveyard after because its costs weren't paid. Yeah, effectively just a two-mana destroy target Flage if Atkins wants it to be. Problem is that Flage will come back eventually. It might take a few turns, but it'll come back eventually. You could also just blink out the Fable and then get a Fable reset so we can do some draw discarding next turn. And we could, yeah, play this other Guide of Souls and now attack with Philia and give it two plus and plus one counters and flying. Yeah, there's an attack for seven down to zero energy. And Philia could either blink Flage, it could blink Guide of Souls, it could blink Reflection. Well, chooses not to blink anything. I'm going to pass the turn back. Trust it. Strange because it. Now the Philia is going to trigger anyway, right? R Ryan just gets to attack, and then it's still on the battlefield. If you're gonna, it's going to trigger anyway. You might as well put it in the graveyard. I agree. 
you know, if Adkins wanted to get, you know, wanted to keep that land in hand and blink the reflection so he can discard it again on his next turn, dig right. through his deck, then I, I could see leaving the, the flage around. You're getting something out of it, but not blinking anything is a strange choice. Yeah, I, just an oversight. I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, blinking the flage seems bad because it's going to kill my thing, so I'm just not going to blink it. And yeah. then you don't blink anything, even though the affiliate has an extra bonus when you blink with a plus, plus one counter, and you have the two kind of souls, and you have a fable and it, blinking any of those would have been fine. Yeah. Remember, kids, it's not about finding good plays. It's about finding the best plays. Sometimes the best plays still feel bad. Right, kind of fetch for an elegant parlor here is uh, Justin Adkins. And if you can find an answer to this Flage, he's looking pretty good. And honestly, he might, can he race? Racing a Flage seems ill-advised. It's, it's hard to do. I'm not going to say impossible. Land goes to the graveyard off Surveil. What do we find for turn? Some white card. Couldn't quite get a glimpse of it. Could it be a static prison? That would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. Ooh. Two here for Hay is going to go for Discharge on the Philia. And floating some sort of mana off the Cascade Bluffs. Yeah. Didn't want to fetch an untapped red source with Arid Mesa. Uh, that's not a good sign. Oh, it was an ether hub. It wasn't even a white card. We're gonna go fetching. I wonder if Ryan goes and gets a surveil land or just gets second planes. He's already seen one blood moon effect. Yeah. Not sure if he has another surveil land because the thundering falls got put into the graveyard earlier from the archive. Good call. All right, fetches steam vents. Extra red source never hurt nobody. Now he doesn't have to rely on the Cascade Bluffs and make awkward plays like he did last turn. Would have had a mana burn for one if it was 2008. Where my pulse of the field's at. All right. Flage likely going to chunk in here and eat a guy to souls. Gain three. So Atkins it, down to nine. So the Flage is lethal next turn. And he's up to 12. Very healthy life total at this stage of the game. I see Wrath of the Skies... I don't think it's worth playing here just to kill the guide. If you were going to play it, I would have loved to have maybe pre-combat played it and then all the damage from Flage go upstairs. You look at how this game is played out. Hayes doesn't have, didn't have a lot going on outside of this Flage. The Wrath of the Skies would have you know, gotten him back into it. All right, so we're only going to burn one energy to kill the guide of souls. But if this Flage was in the graveyard... Atkins would have been in great shape. All right, so game number one goes to Ryan Hayes. Perhaps a misstep from Atkins not using the Philia to the best of its ability, but Ryan Hayes does take game number one. As Atkins goes to the sideboard to look for some help, I'm going to look for some help from Ross. How do you think he's going to be boarding here against this powerful Jeskai control deck from Ryan Hayes? Well, I see seven two ofs to go along with the Gigantic Companion in this Boros sideboard. It's two Celestial Purge, two Damping Sphere, two Deafening Silence, two Disruptor Flute, two Harsh Mentor, two Unlicensed Hearse, and two Wear Tear. Not a lot that I like. Flute is sort of interesting against Flage specifically, because you got to now pay three more for both halves of it. But it's pretty low value, and you don't want to bring in reactive cards like that against the control deck, because eventually, you know, they'll have enough mana that it doesn't matter. And you're playing in such a way that the game will go longer by playing re reactive cards. The unlicensed hearses are another way to deal with Flage that's a little bit more proactive, but there's not really other graveyard shenanigans going on for Ryan, so that's also a pretty weak card in the matchup. You do have these eight removals, or ten removal spells, really, but Prison is solid, so some number of those have to come out. I guess Purge is a clean answer to Flage if you want that, but it's really a, a pretty weak sideboard for the control matchup. Uh, not altogether surprising that you you're not super prepared in the sideboard because the main deck here is a lot of card advantage gener generating threats, yeah. and that is quite good in control matchups, but having all this removal in the main and not a lot of good cards to bring in in place of them uh, seems like a structural issue in the matchup for this list. All right, on the other side of things, Hayes, with that Just Guy Control deck, pretty similar spread of sideboard options with both red and white accessible. Is there anything in his sideboard that he's going to be bringing in to fight this specifically? Some sort of sweeper effect, maybe extra removal? Yeah. 
definitely extra removal and sweepers. I see two copies of Celestial Purge and two Supreme Verdicts. So those four cards are auto-includes as far as I'm concerned. The rest of the sideboard, uh, not nearly as good. Three Consigned to Memory, two Drain of Magistrate, one Invert Polarity, four Obsidian Charmar, and one Soul Guide Lantern. Invert Polarity is awkward because the Boros deck is so low curved. I wouldn't want to bring in a three-mana counter spell. Uh, so I think just the Verdicts and the Purges coming in for Ryan here can likely cut his Force of Negations. Uh, maybe Teferi, pretty weak against low curve decks. So some slight upgrades here uh, just to give himself a little bit more interaction against the powerful threats from Boros. All right, players are just about ready here for game number two. They're looking at their opening hands. We'll see if they are ready to start or if either player wants to take a mulligan. All right, looks like Atkins is going to take a mulligan. So while he does that, I'm going to take this time to shout out our sponsors for this weekend's event. SpiceRack.gg, brand new tournament software from our friends over at SpiceRack. We've been working with them for our last few events, and their tournament software has come a long way, and it is great. Uh, check out SpiceRack.gg. Uh, tell your local game store to sign up for their tournaments on SpiceRack. And, uh, yeah. Next up, Wings, etc., Grill & Pub. It's a great place to... Have a drink, watch some sports on TV, hang out with friends, and grab a bite to eat. Ross and myself will be up there in just a few hours enjoying the time that we have there. Uh, thank you to Ghost Energy. Ghost Energy keeps us hydrated and energized on these long tournament weekends. We're currently in round five of seven. We got that plus the top eight coming. And last but not least, thank you to Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard is the top of the line when it comes to TCG supplies, from the Boulder Deck Box to the Katana Sleeves. Check your local game store today for Ultimate Guard products. Six-card keep for Adkins. We're underway. Here's Guide of Souls. Okay. Let's see if Ryan has the one-mana removal to keep parity as he did so well in game one. All right. Fetch Shock, Galvanic Discharge, Burn 2 Energy, one left. Guide of Souls down. Both players with a, an energy sub-theme. While it is a, an important part of the deck, it is not... I wouldn't say it is necessarily the focal point of either deck. They're both just kind of harvesting the energy from the spells that make the energy to kind of do, like, self-contained stuff. Sometimes you get one or two energy left over here or there, which makes the next energy card you play a little bit better. But it's nothing like the Etherworks Marvel-style energy decks that we're used to seeing. Yeah, not going all in. Just... Enabling some very powerful removal in Gelvan Discharge and Wrath of the Skies for the Jeskai deck, and then the Boros deck, you know, is making its uh, really taking advantage of Guide of Souls. Yes, Guide of Souls, but the Galvanic Discharges there are quite excellent in most matchups, but not this one. There are very few creatures on Ryan Hayes' side of the table. The Amped Raptor occasionally with an extra energy will be able to play a three drop like Fable or Flage off the top. That's nice. But here's an Ajani, powerful two drop here, a lot of pressure. And I do see Blood Moon in hand for Atkins. And Hayes, if you look at his mana, has Sacred Foundry and Aired Mesa. So unlikely to fetch a basic with that Mesa if he needs blue. Though I do see a basic island in hand. So this might be get planes, next turn play island, and be pretty well insulated against a potential moon. All right, Ryan doesn't respond to the Ajani at all. I'm going to go back his way. Fetch for there at Mesa. Going to go digging. Yeah, go straight for a Plains. I think he drew a Lorien Revealed for turn, so it could potentially even get a second island and be very well insulated against Blood Moon. Looks like we're going to take this turn to play. A Wrath of the Sky is going to burn the one energy he already had and pay one for an extra energy, and that's going to take care of the Ajani and the token. Bone Crusher uh, Giant, the draw for Adkins, uh, but... No land. Honestly, if you're Atkins, you're pretty happy to trade one for one with the Wrath of the Skies. Yeah, are you pretty happy to miss your third land drop? That you're less happy about. <laughs> and it looks like he did bring in Celestial Purge, and it is just sitting awkwardly in the hand. I'm going to tell you all a secret. You ready for this? Uh, if you are playing a creature-based deck, and you're on the play... Just uh, try not sideboarding anything sometimes. Just try not boarding in any cards. Most of the time, your main deck is just extremely powerful. Maybe it's controversial opinion. I don't know. Okay. 
Ryan has a ring. Adkins going for a stomp in response to get the Bone Crusher on an adventure and does find third land here. Can either play the Bone Crusher uh, from the adventure zone or deploy Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is where I would be thinking. Yeah, Blood Moon now is basically dead, though, thanks to two planes and an island on your opponent's side of the table. Yeah. Things going very well here for Ryan. He's just, once again, maintained parity on the battlefield. Wasn't even under as much pressure as he was in game one. And now lands the ring on turn four. Uh, still a very healthy 14 life. And it's going to be a very uphill battle here for Justin Atkins to crawl back into this game. All right. More cards drawn for Ryan Hayes. We'll see if he's able to turn these extra resources into a dub. We've seen him do it plenty of times before. Let's figure out how he wants to do it. Flage has been the go-to for these Jeskai control decks thanks to the life gain as well as the intense closing speed. The life gain particularly strong when you're dealing yourself some damage with the one ring. Fable token going to meet Galvanic Discharge down to one energy. And another ring is cast to reset. Protect life total. We're going to draw a card. Easy game. It's like a couple tune the narratives in hand for Ryan. Really just digging for a flage at this point. Let's see what Atkins can manage. Gonna pitch, yeah, the poopy blood moon and an extra land he no longer needs. Draw two fresh ones with the second chapter of Fable. Alright, Lightning Bolt's one of the pickups. Yeah, so the hand is Lightning Bolt and Celestial Purge. Alright, here's Bone Crusher Giant. Ryan down to 12. We'll draw for turn. I believe that's a prismatic ending, so we have an answer to the Bone Man lined up. Is that a Galvanic Discharge? Is it just three removal spells in hand for Justin Atkins? Sure looks like it, and Flage is the pickup for Ryan. Yeah. Some bad news bears. This, this Flage will get Celestial Purged eventually, but it'll gain six life in the process, deal with the Bone Crusher Giant, and Ryan will draw another 12 cards, <laughs> and we'll find another one. All right, Flage. Zap your Bone Crusher. I believe Bone Crusher is spell only, so I don't even think it deals damage. Yeah. You right. All right, Hayes is going to gain three, up to 15. Last turn with seven in hand. Going to get back Atkins' way. Fable will transform. Three removal spells in hand for Atkins against the one ring and a flage in the graveyard. Not where you want to be. Picks up an unlicensed hearse. That can deal with the flage in the graveyard. Let's see if Ryan wants to fight over it. We're going to go ahead and eat it. Famous words of Weird Al Yankovic. Just eat it. All right. Flage down. Two counters on the hearse. I guess technically they're not counters, but whatever. We're going to drop. Two more energy for tuning the narrative. And a turn. Discharge Fable. And we can get another energy up to four. This deck really needs Dynavolt Tower for some closing speed. <laughs> oh yeah, there's my man. Let's draw three cards. Now we can just Teferi the Ring. Not really give a Teferi care. Teferi the Ring, bounce it, replay it. <laughs> yeah. We have entered garbage time, he thinks. Yeah, especially sitting on 13 life. Being able to reset the ring here means that it's going to be very difficult for Atkins to catch back up. You always have that hope in the back of your mind, like, oh, my opponent's ring is going to deal them four damage next turn and then five damage a turn after. But you don't take into consideration the, like, nine cards they draw in that time period to, to reset the ring somehow. Yeah, there's a solitude off the top from Ryan, drawn from the Teferi. Oh, yeah, has Prismatic Ending for the hearse. Move to discard. That's my least favorite words in magic. Move to discard. Yeah. Discards Flooded Strand and Tune the Narrative. Has enough energy, has enough cards. Doesn't need to tune anything. This deck is fully in tune. Yeah. Here's Galvanic. Zap your Teferi. <laughs> he gone. Ryan doesn't care at all. By the Jagman. Yes, Elk Friend. 
You think I? You think they're gonna do like special versions of the companions in Bloomborough because they're all already animals? Oh, probably not. Hmm. All right, tune the narrative. Gonna draw a card, make more energy. No big payoffs for the energy, so maybe Gigantha just gonna get blasted by Galvanic in a few turns. Here's four mana. We're gonna play the one ring again. All yeah, right, just. Really needs some card draw here. He's so light. Puts a one ring in the graveyard. Not going to draw a card with the ring yet. Might not even draw with it at all. <laughs> Here's a Janny. You like that one? Here's Janny. Man. Tough audience. All right. Make some tokens. Sure thing. There's a flage. Could just flage both things right now. Yeah, I think that's what Ryan is going to do. And her, oh, He uh, doesn't have another red. In hand, at least. <laughs> We're going to bolt the token in response so that we can flip the Johnny. Sure, yeah. So, so I'll do the Ajani in response. Okay, yeah. No, he, Actually, wanted, he wants to gain the three life. So. Sure, sure. Could have Celestial purged the... Yeah, with the Flage still in the stack, you can still purge it. That's what we do. Now, Solitude and a Grip versus nothing. Giganta. Flage is the pickup. That's a pretty nice one. Now Ryan might actually want to start drawing cards since we have this Solitude to gain life. Yeah, yeah. Well, only it's four in hand. We're, we're running low. Yeah. I'm sworn to carry your burdens. That was the 12 on the upkeep from the one ring. There's a purge. That'll deal with the Gigantha. All right. Zap your Gigantha. Attack for three. 14-15. Ooh, looks like there might be a life total discrepancy. Is it 15 all now? Well, get no, a 14. Okay. short up here in just a moment. Figure it out. And yeah, Ryan has a full grip. Flage. Anyway, here's Flage. I might counter this just because the Solitude is just like so important for winning the game. Yeah, and you're about to draw four cards next turn. Okay. That's fine. Ryan has more discipline than we do. Yeah. See, I just know that I can't lose, and so I'm just trying to win as quickly as possible. <laughs> that's that's how you throw away games from unlosable positions. That's fair. That's why they got me in the booth. Yeah. We have we have very different incentives than Ryan. <laughs> Alright, draw three cards. One, two, three. That's a bunch of lands. Another ring. Gonna reset the ring. Yeah. There's one more flage in the deck that Ryan is frantically digging towards. And draw three with a Lorien revealed. You can also just hold up counterspell, spell snare. All that seems fine. Passes the turn back after discarding the hand size. Guide of Souls to pick up for Atkins. We can go guide into bring flage back from the graveyard. Not a horrible turn, but Ring is currently giving protection from. The three damage as well, so Atkins is just going to have to target his self. Can target the Flage. Oh, right. Can target the Flage. Good call. Alright, we do need to exile five cards from the graveyard to escape it. Yeah, can we get that fixed, Mr... Gotta pay those costs, buddy. Yeah. Can we get a intervene? Okay. Oh, never Ryan, mind. Ryan, go. Ryan just noticed it. There you go. Fine. All right, Ryan can draw a card here with the ring. Go to 12. All right, draws her turn. Find Supreme Verdict. I don't think he really needed it. Yeah. Oh, he has two Verdict, two Wrath in hand, so I imagine a Sweeper will get cast this turn just for efficiency's sake. Well, Drew to Fairy Time Raveler, so we can tick that up and then Verdict during the attack step. Gonna bounce the One Ring instead. 
I like it. Oh, and there's a subtlety. That, that'll that play. Yeah. Now we can... Wrath for two, spinning three energy. Doesn't kill Planeswalker, so Teferi's safe. And now we can hold up Solitude and Subtlety. Place the Thundering Falls. Ooh, well, well, yeah, keeps the Solitude. Discard some... <laughs> Discards two Wrath against the Johnny Ragavan creature deck. <laughs> Make it three wraps. <laughs> yeah, just discard Lord and Revealed if you're not going to cast it with 20 mana. All right, Flage. One more time. Let's pay those costs this time. One, two, three, four, five. All right, put it back on top of the deck. And he packs it in action <laughs> and says, No more! No more taps the max. A, a merciful concession. Ryan Hayes wins 2-0 with Just Guy Control and